In-depth football coverage from The Athletic is now just £1 per week. See the link in the description to sign up today. How do you buy a football club? It's about networks, says one financial advisor. If you're a billionaire, you can speak to anyone, anytime. And increasingly, investors take advice from specialist sporting advisory firms or boutique investment banks. Oakwell Capital's partners have previously assisted in takeovers at Manchester City, Leeds, West Ham and Tottenham. Doug Harmer, a partner at Oakwell, says that less than 5% of investors who make contact with his company will actually end up buying a football club. His colleague Andrew Umbers continues, Investors are more professional now. They demand that we articulate the media strategy of the league and the commercial strategy of the club to see whether there is underperformance or outperformance relative to income streams. They have conversations with the leagues as they want to know about the governance of the league, such as voting rights and potential salary caps, and how that may change. And increasingly, we also draw on partners in the performance side of football, Harmer continues. This manifests itself around player values and how to develop academy players. Sam Rush, the former chief executive of Derby County, recently reunited with his former Derby chairman Andy Appleby, after Appleby's general sports worldwide acquired Rush's 366 group. The pair have considerable experience in buying and selling clubs. Agreeing a value or price is the easier part, he says. The harder part is finding out the ongoing commitments. Football clubs have significant property deals. Someone may own the club, someone else own the training ground and someone else own the stadium. There may be debts to be settled. And it's also a testing period for any selling party as they rarely operate from a position of strength and are sometimes forced to place their trust in questionable figures. A financial advisor to investors adds, there are these estate agent types, a cadre of people who fool around. They may say to a rich person, are you interested in buying Gillingham, as an example. The rich person may ask how much it would cost, then they phone the Gillingham owner and say, I hear a so-and-so really wants to buy your football club, would you be willing to sell it? If a deal happens, they get paid a commission on the deal. When a potential investor is actually identified, there are key stages in the process. These include striking a deal over valuation, access to a club's data room, the due diligence process and a period of exclusivity to complete the deal. As investors close in on a purchase, strategies also develop for a public relations drive. And the financial structure of deals is also becoming increasingly innovative. Rush, the former Derby executive, explains how owners may be prepared to drop the asking price for the initial instalment if clauses can be agreed based on future performances. A club could, in theory, sell for £50 million and have clauses to say a further £25 million would be awarded to the selling owner if the club is promoted. Or they could insist that they receive 20% of the sale of the leading goalscorer or request a percentage in the transfer fee from an academy product his investment has helped to create. But of course, even when it appears that the interest is genuine, the intricacies have all been navigated and the terms of the deal are close, stumbling blocks can still appear. Due diligence works both ways, as clubs and leagues seek to vet potential buyers while the buying party is granted access to the financial details of the club. There are precedents where investors fail to do due diligence. Newcastle owner Mike Ashley famously admitted that he did not do so when buying the club for £134 million from the Hall family in 2007 and subsequently discovered that the club still owed £27 million on transfer deals for players. For those who are more cautious, that brings the chance to study the books. Keith Wyness, who was Everton's chief executive between 2004 and 2008, describes the benefits. A data room is a secure computer room within a stadium or a Dropbox-style transfer. It's secured by passwords and you can track who goes in, what they copy, what they download and what they don't. Most clubs on the market create a data room. This includes all playing and staff contracts, all contracts related to services for the club, contracts regarding the ownership of stadiums and training grounds, catering contracts and all forecasts. It's everything. And this is open to a potential buyer to analyse with advisors and justify the price. A club then has a chance to answer questions. Now, a prospective buyer and their incoming executives will also be required to pass an owners and directors test by the Premier League or Football League. Mark Palmer, a former Wickham Wanderers executive says, There are two aspects. The individual director's test where you need different types of ID, proof of residency, utility bill, passport or driving license, and then checks on you as to whether you have a criminal record or are barred from corporate ownership. 
If you are the source of money, you must prove the source of money, if it is clean or hedged. The other aspect is a financial forecast indication. You basically have to do your business model for two years on how you structure the club. And there are cases where the Football League will also want to meet personally with potential owners. In some cases, a deal is agreed only for it to fall through at the very final moment. One current owner of a championship club, for example, lowered his bidding for the club simply because the team lost a game, much to the bewilderment of his predecessor. So, it's an imprecise world in which the matching of a club for sale with an investor with the means to buy is only the beginning of the process, and in many cases, just the start of the difficulties. Tifo is delighted to be able to offer full access to The Athletic now for just £1 per week. Read in-depth coverage of your favourite teams across 10 different sports, provided by some of the best sports journalists in the world. Follow the stories that you care about with closer access and intelligent takes. Whether it's sports news, tactics or finances, you'll find it all on The Athletic, alongside a host of brilliant podcasts dedicated to different teams. So, see the link in the description now. Thanks for supporting TiVo and of course watching today's video.